Howdy! So this video was actually recorded uh, all the way back in early August and then passed off to my dear pal Brody to edit while I was dealing with the disaster of this apartment um, from when they had the... I'm still dealing with it. There's still... there's still, I don't know. I just... Nothing will get clean, but that's fine. But then a bunch of stuff came up and I was still in hotels and I couldn't get anything to download properly. And then just more things came up. So I figured I'd save it for a rainy day. And today is that rainy day. So if anything I say seems particularly dated, that's why. Also another quick reminder that the Velocipaster 2 is currently on Kickstarter looking for funding. So if you have any ability to support it, that would be awesome. I would love to see it get made. Maybe if enough of you donate and tell them that I sent you, they'll let me be in the movie. Howdy everyone, sorry for the delay in content. Um, I've been uh, traveling a lot for work and then came home to my apartment with two giant holes in the wall for some alleged emergency in another unit, but then they didn't cover any of my stuff. So the whole place is just caked in drywall dust so I can't work or sleep there. That's been a disaster. But because of all the travel, I was staying in hotels for about three weeks and the one thing I could count on was a never-ending stream of catfish marathons. Catfish, the one thing that shouldn't be able to exist in its most pure form in our year of 2022, but alas, people still getting fished. For those unfamiliar, Catfish is a show that's mostly hosted by Neve Shulman and Max Joseph traveling around the United States, helping people figure out if the person they're talking to online is who they say they are. Something that made a bit more sense in the early 2000s, a lot less as we moved into the 2010s, and honestly zero sense in 2022. At some point, if someone is able to message you every day but has no way of talking to you on the phone, video chatting, or sending regular pictures, they're lying about something. Sometimes they're ends up being some kind of logical explanation as to why they were hesitant to schedule meetups or be a little bit more open, but for the most part, if they're not making that effort, they're probably not worth it. But most of the time, it ends up being someone pretending to be a different person, either because they're bored or don't think they're attractive enough to get their own matches, scams for cash, and sometimes they are specifically on a mission to mess with the person they're catfishing. It's a wide range here. So outside of TV marathons, the place to watch catfish fish is on Hulu, but one problem, Hulu isn't available in Canada. But with Surfshark VPN, that is a problem no more. All I have to do is use Surfshark to connect to a US server, meaning my internet thinks that's where I am, and boom, catfish. Surfshark has thousands of different server locations all around the world that you can quickly connect to across all your devices with one account. So if you find out that a movie or a TV show you love is playing on Netflix, but only in Japan or Germany, just quickly look up whatever country you need, connect, and you're good to go. Because life's just too short not to have access to all the world's entertainment offerings, so let Surfshark open up your world. It's super fast, secure, blocks unwanted ads, and if you use code JEDI, you can save a whopping 83% off your subscription, plus get three months free. And if that wasn't good enough, they offer a 30-day money-back guaranteed if you're not completely satisfied, so make sure to click the link in the description down below to sign up for Surfshark today. The show was born out of a documentary filmed around Neve's own life, where he was actually cat fished by a woman named Angela and now is apparently super friendly with this woman who manipulated him online, which, you know, good for him. Uh, but I did notice in certain situations he'd be a little bit too forgiving of some of the catfish behavior and occasionally even wondering if like a romantic bond would be possible. And honestly, I don't really care what your reasons are. Any relationship formed on a lie as big as who you even are probably isn't gonna last. But that's not to say that he goes soft on everyone. He will get into it with the people who really deserve it. And if he is being a little bit more kind, I can always count on Max to get heated. Every girl fears that they're talking to some mid 40 something year old man who's sad in his crusty boxers. And you're that guy. We finally met you. And as wild and fun as so many of these episodes are, I feel like a lot of them are staged or at least like heavily exaggerated. A producer has confirmed that they do whatever they can to keep Neve and Max in the dark, but it, yeah, there's still some stuff going on behind the scenes. I know for a fact a lot of people make up stories just to get on the show or to get something out of the show. A lot of the times they get exposed, but I'm sure some of them haven't or don't until much later. And I know that producers vet a lot of these stories out to confirm that they're fake or that there's something fishy going on to just play into dramatics. And I'm not saying it's all fake. There's definitely people on this show that are genuinely being taken advantage of and just so badly want for it to be real that they just keep sending people money that aren't giving them anything in return and those ones always make me want to scream at the screen but you know it's sad but the whole thing makes for 
I don't know about good television, but it definitely makes for bingeable television. Good rule to follow though, uh, if you think you're in a relationship with someone online who won't talk to you on the phone or video chat with you or send you like regular updated pictures in this year of 2022 uh, and starts asking for money or nudes, just run and also learn how to reverse image search. It'll go a long way. Because there are just so many wild stories on this show. You've got people that are absolutely stalking their exes, guys making some weird emotional harems where he's collecting nudes from women all around the country, a girl who catfished the same guy twice and lied about having cancer, just absolutely unhinged shit. I'd like to think that about 90% of the people who are genuinely catfishing are also likely to be terrible people with little to no empathy because they're rarely apologetic. And another fun fact about the show that really plays into the idea that it's a little bit more orchestrated than you might believe is that more often than not, it's the catfish that reaches out to be on the show. Either because they want attention or they feel like they need to come clean in some really big way. Because apparently just saying like, hey, I lied is, is too difficult. You gotta go on national television. But even in those situations, the show is still gonna frame it as if the victim is the one who reached out to Catfish to look for help. Every once in a while, they'll flip things up for funsies where it's the Catfish reaching out, but largely this is all part of the same formula. And when you think about it, that all kind of makes sense. How many episodes of Catfish can you think of where they don't find the person on the other end? Every one of these stories are vetted by the producers before it actually makes it to the filming stage because anybody who they're going to film needs to sign a waiver. So why would they waste a bunch of time doing a bunch of effort and filming things if they can't ever get that final shot. But again, as far as I'm aware, that is something happening behind the scenes with the producers. They try to keep the hosts out of it as much as possible. So not completely staged and some people are definitely being helped. You can really tell the ones that are particularly sad, but Producers produce that shit. And I also assume that the longer that the show's running, the more they're getting those people reaching out with fake stories and the harder it's gonna be to see through them. Point being, I've had a lot of fun with the show. There's times where I've been genuinely shocked by it. And I'd like to do some off the cuff reactions to some of the more notorious episodes that I haven't seen in the future. But today there is one episode in particular that I would like to focus on. It's the first episode of the show that I had ever seen on some random night at a Call of Duty event in Florida, which which also seems fitting for some reason. And I believe that this is one of the most notorious episodes of Catfish for a multitude of reasons. And that episode is from season four, Hundra and Emily. An episode with so many quotable moments and features a nice spattering of all the worst things you can expect to happen on Catfish in which everyone involved, including the person allegedly being catfished, is lying. So let's dive into the episode. I've been quoting one line from this episode with friends for years. It's the first thing I think about when I think catfish and I completely forgotten or never fully acknowledged that the guest host was Machine Gun Kelly. And we've talked about him recently. I did a video about his movie Good Morning a couple months ago that you should definitely check out. And while I called him cringe, a lot of you pointed out that he's said some pretty questionable things over the years. He said inappropriate things about Eminem's daughter when she was underage. I'd like to think he's changed into just being the kind of cringe we're currently being subjected to where he's like drinking Megan Fox's blood, but I don't know the guy, I ain't defending him. I just think the fact that he happens to be in the only episode of Catfish that I had seen for years outside of the documentary and now he's just like a completely different type of relevant just added to the lore of my Catfish experience. He's a bad boy rapper, he's an actor. Okay, let's calm down, Neve. I'm rooting for love. Wow, already. Already. I will say he seems very soft in this episode. Like, this is Colson Baker, not MGK bad boy rapper. But let's set the stage for this episode. So Neve and Mr. Gun Kelly are hit up by Hundra, a 21 year old who started dating a girl named Emily online from New York. But because Emily isn't making any effort to meet up with her, even though Hundra's just in Philadelphia, she's bailing at the last second. She's asked for money from her. Emily's apparently used five different numbers to contact her and disabled her Facebook account. She's only ever sent three pictures of herself. So Hundra is starting to think that something's wrong. You know, it's all the usual stuff, except it takes a little bit of a twist. Hundra's family is from Haiti, where being gay is not seen as acceptable. So this would essentially be outing herself to her entire family once they found the episode. Doesn't necessarily seem like the best way to tell them if you're trying to change their way of thinking, but sure. I also love that they give the guest hosts little cameras when there's like a full film crew around them. It adds to the illusion. Now, as risky as it is, Hundra apparently wants to use this as an opportunity to be an example for other people in Haiti to let them know that being gay is okay. Sounds nice, right? 
altruistic, nothing could be off here, right? <laughs> Just wait. So this whole thing started with Hundra reaching out to Emily on Facebook after a bad breakup, which is when she drops the most iconic line, a line that again, I still quote to this day and absolutely sets the tone of expectations going forward, gay for a day. I was feeling gay for a day. So I'm like, hey, let me just be gay for a day and see what happens. Gay for a day, back to straight by dawn. But it seems like gay for a day turned into gay for May, gay for every day. Ain't that just the way? <laughs> I'll stop. So Neve and Kelly are on the case. They start looking up one of the numbers that Hunter gave them and instantly the first one links back to someone named Geraldine in Philadelphia, same city that Hunter's in. Clearly not the same person she's been talking to, but they stumble on a picture of Geraldine kissing Emily, but her name is Melanie. So is this a couple scam? Is Geraldine just using Melanie's pictures for cash, emotional attention? Is it somebody just messing with both of them? Just you wait. Hundra's obviously upset both from the lying and because she's just really not into this Gerilyn person. Though I gotta say the catfish way of editing in these recreated text messages is always super fun to me. It's like you're watching this person's heart break into a million pieces while they just start flashing some cringe across the scene to sad music. She's hurt, for sure. Damn, MGK, how did you get so in tune with the emotions of those around you? So wise. He does seem genuinely into this, though. I appreciate the commitment. So Hunter comes back down and trickles out some concerning comments. I don't want that. I'm not attractive to girls that dress like men. Yeah, MGK's face reaction here really just says it all. Personal preference is fine, and I do think that you're allowed to disrespect someone catfishing you to a certain extent, and it's cool if your emotions are running high. But there's a line I feel like is being crossed here where the hate is towards like an entire style of person and not just the person that hurt her. So instead of going right to Geraldine, they go to the person whose pictures were being used to catfish Melanie. And it's pretty obvious that people are vetted before they get this particular call because they never sound shocked or confused as to why Catfish is leaving them a message. But Melanie says that Gerilyn is actually her ex and didn't take the breakup well. And for some reason is now using her pictures to Catfish Hundra. And I don't know why Melanie isn't more upset here. Like if you found out that an ex was using pictures of you to Catfish, wouldn't you be super pissed? Either way, they call Gerilyn. I'm with Catfish. Are you serious? <laughs> this is funny. So weird behavior. She seems to think it's like funny that they're with Catfish, but either way, Geraldine agrees to meet up. And MGK is here asking the real questions. You know, like what does this mean for Melanie and Geraldine's friendship? That's something I think you should work out with her separately. Okay. Neve's like, nah, nah, we're here for one victim only. MGK out here trying to do talk therapy with everyone. So their current theory is that Geraldine wanted to create drama for Melanie and her current girlfriend. And I'm not sure how that even would have happened because there's no way for Melanie's girlfriend to have seen any of this stuff going on behind the scenes. And Hundra was the one who reached out to the fake Emily account, not the other way around. She literally said she was trolling around Facebook to find pretty girls to hit up for conversation. There was no predatory angle from the fake Emily account. It wasn't even a dating profile, it was Facebook. So how could you use that to cause trouble in your ex's relationship? There's just, there's a lot of questions here. But they finally get to Gerilyn and it's not great. You must feel kind of nervous, right? I'm, Cause I'm nervous, you gotta feel. Hey, are you nervous? Cause like, I'm nervous. Are you, do you think she's gonna be nervous? Cause I'd be nervous. There's just something about knowing that MGK, most known for rapping at this point, is just so into this and pushing for a love match resolution. Still not your type? This man is just trying to be the ultimate wingman. He's committed. Hundra's still saying some concerning stuff though. Mm, she's a stud, so. So we get into the confrontation and Hundra once again confirms that she's the one who reached out to the Emily account. At first it was just, a game to me because I was just trying to get my ex mad. So you made a fake Facebook account to make your ex mad? Did you just want her to see it and get stressed out or something? I don't understand. And she also says that she never ended up picking up the money that Hundra sent to her. She just wanted to see if Hundra was like really riding for her. But she also doesn't seem into Hundra. Like there's just a lot of flip flopping in the conversation here. But oh, holy shit, she has Melanie's name tattooed on her neck. Oh no, no. 
Look, the catfishing is one thing. That's a whole other bag. You don't do that. Also, I can't tell if it's the shit quality on my parents' internet, but not the best applied tattoo. Well, we were engaged, yeah. We both have. You guys were engaged. Yeah. They were engaged? Yeah, I can see why she'd be super upset if Melanie just suddenly went back to her ex. What the fuck is this circus? But here's where Hundra really starts going off the rails. She starts talking about how Geraldine was probably trying to turn a girl gay. Not just a regular black girl, but a Haitian girl into becoming gay. Okay. First off, you were the one trolling for attractive girls on Facebook, Ms. Gay, for a day. Second, I really doubt anyone in the United States or anywhere in the world is specifically thinking, hmm, gee, wouldn't it be funny to get a Haitian conversion under my belt? Where's the belt? That's just the attitude the world needs out there, the gay predator. Top notch, super stoked, love that. See, this whole thing just feels weird. Like it could be the awkwardness of the situation, but We'll see. Cause even outside those comments, it's just, it's all bad. And then I meet this. It's like, this. don't get me <laughs> wrong, but. Oof, God damn, Hondra, what the fuck? I don't think it's some deep, crazy scheme going on. Oh, Mr. Machine Gun, just you wait. Also, how is this man tall as hell and still looks like he's a five-year-old wearing his older brother's tank top? Oh, I'm looking for a lipstick lesbian and I got but Jesus, Andra! Look, her not being your type is fine. You going on some weird tirade about her turning you gay, not at all fine. Sounds like you're preemptively planning an escape route from when your family sees this. But we absolutely draw the line at homophobic slurs, holy shit. It's still somehow gonna get worse though. That's an ignorant way to look at it. Again, the voice of reason. Before any of this can settle, Geraldine contacts Neve to meet up again and she drops the absolute bomb on the situation. I don't know, Hundra. You don't know, Hundra? No. Yeah, the reason she was so flip floppy on her narrative is because none of this happened. Apparently, Hundra made up the entire story just to get on Catfish and ask Melanie and her to go along with it. And MGK is mind blown. Don't know, Hundra. Don't like her at all like that. Oh no. This man wanted to help spread love and instead he's getting someone's attempted 15 minutes of fame. And I don't understand why Melanie went along with it. Geraldine makes sense. She did it for Melanie, like literally willing to ruin her reputation for a smidgen of Melanie's attention. Brutal. But I guess after all the weird and horrible things that Hundra said, Geraldine wasn't down for that kind of reputation beating. She's totally okay with the world thinking she was down to catfish someone and impersonate her ex, but being accused of trying to turn straight girls gay, too far. Which fair it is, I just think they're both too far. So now Neve and Max are just confused. They don't know why they're here, why they're wasting their time, and it's Pretty obvious, boys, someone wanted attention. And honestly, Neve, you're getting just what your producers want. I could be with my daughter on Father's Day right now. Sir, excuse me, what? You guys, you guys couldn't schedule around Father's Day? He couldn't like say no? Okay, like at least it wasn't her birthday. I'm about to go crazy on this little woman, man. I feel like they clearly told him he had to avoid swearing and the remaining 10 minutes of this show will elicit some of the greatest lines in television history. So they get everyone together for the final big confrontation. So you just steal pictures and portray and talk to people? It's over, yeah. What's over? She spilled the beans. So what the hell is going on? Is this some like next level malicious scheme for Hundra to get on television? Was she trying to like paint gay people as evil? Is there a personal grudge? Nope, apparently this is just the way she needed to come out to friends and family. I wanted the world to know that I was gay. Like Why does the world need to know that you're gay? Yeah, especially if it was just for a day. I'll stop. But she tries arguing that because her culture doesn't accept gay people, this is actually the way it had to be done. If anybody wants to paint the logic tree for me there, I'd, I'd be grateful. But as Neva rightfully points out, her actions are only going to be hurting the cause she's claiming to be helping. But she's completely confused as to how she could be causing any harm at all. Because she's a terrible person. Because you lied. And you Chris. also speak on gays like they have a disease. They Thank you, Mr. Gun Kelly. She then tries to defend her slur use by saying she's allowed because she's in the community, but no context matters no matter who you are. And I can guarantee you the way you use those words, 
Not okay. Never okay. And you picked the people to play out this lie. So you had to plan that this was gonna be your reaction and thought it was okay. So after picking her ears for a bit, she bails. I so wish Max would have been here because he would have laid into her so hard. And while Neve starts going at Melanie to try to figure out why the hell she was going along with it, MGK lets Hunter know how he's really feeling. You are a sucker, you. Corny, you are corny. You are, a, uh, you are a shameful citizen. You are a shameful citizen is easily a top 10 insult in history. It is right up there with those Monty Python classics. Now by the end, all Neve can figure out is that Melanie was an acquaintance of Hundra and wanted to help her, but I really think it had to be something else. I wanna say they knew that they would get paid for appearing on the show because I am pretty sure there's compensation to some degree to everyone. Or maybe Melanie just wanted on TV and knew that the victim role would be low risk. I have no idea. But it's not over yet. Hundra wants to talk to Neve without MGK. And I get it. You don't want to be called a shameful citizen again. You can really only handle that level of insult once in a lifetime. Well, me personally, I'm not going to apologize for anything. Ah, so you suck, suck. And Neve really tries to give her the benefit of the doubt. How trying to orchestrate an episode that focuses on acceptance is important, but she just did it in the most horrendously offensive way possible. And that's why I needed Max here to shame. I wanted my coming out to be something rememberable for me. But, but isn't not... this gonna be worse? Now, I don't know how legit all these episode follow-ups are, but we get the usual two months later. And while Hunter admits that what she did was out of character, she doesn't feel bad for it. I mean, it wasn't necessarily wasting time because everybody still got something out of it. And yeah, this is one of the most notorious episodes of Catfish. Because the whole thing was fake, she's terrible, and we just get some of the most wild quotable lines. You are a, uh, you are a shameful citizen. We Wins for everyone, except the gay community. Shit. I do hope that in the last seven years since this aired, she's grown and isn't as hateful of her own community. I also hope she realized that this was just the worst and most messed up possible way to go about things that likely affected her permanently going forward, but I'd like to hope that things worked out in the end. A lot of these episodes, I wish I could get some follow-up on, but this one in particular, I just wanna know where everyone's at what everyone's up to, why. That's gonna do it for this video and episode of Catfish. There are some other stories that I'd like to do deep dives on in terms of how like wild it gets in the narrative of Catfish. And there's some iconic episodes I've heard of that I've never seen. And these makes for some fun little videos to do while uh, I'm drowning in stress. So if you enjoyed it, let me know and we can figure out some more Catfish fun. But that is gonna do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Subscribe the channel if you're new leave a like if you're into that kind of thing hope you're all having a fantastic day i'm mostly okay and we'll catch you all later